you had some sort of a connection to the laptop, I think. You were like one of the first people to actually be willing to report on it, is my understanding, even though everybody was saying disinformation. But you so, tell me. So I kind of had a bit role in that. Um, so so the guy who owned that that Delaware that Delaware computer repair shop, a guy named John Paul McIsaac. The he, legally blind um, guy. But yes, the legally blind guy, kind of an odd duck. He'd wear his tam o and he, you know, he just kind of, he was an interesting guy. Well, he had like a year earlier given this to the FBI. He first had his dad do it because his dad had some government connections out in Arizona. Then he had the FBI show up. They took the laptop. They gave him a receipt for the laptop, which, which, which he kept. Um, during that time or prior to that time that he gave it to the FBI, he looked on it. And when he looked on it, he not only saw... All of so, you know, because he legally owned it at that point when when Hunter dropped it off and then and then never came back, which wasn't the first time he'd lost a Mac laptop. It was kind of ironic, and or whatever word that would be. And mm -hmm. so this guy waited and waited to have something happen. Nothing happened for a long time. So he eventually called up Rudy's people, Rudy Giuliani, mm -hmm. and and gave it them a copy of it. And then still a month or so had gone by. They said that they were going to shop it out uh, to, to various publications. And the guy found himself like three or four weeks before the election. He's like, nobody's getting back to me and nothing's going on. What's going on? So it, through a bizarre connection, uh, the former, a former weather and helicopter reporter from Los Angeles knew me from back in the day. And he knew, he knew John Paul's dad. And so that's how it came to me. And he came to me and gave me a, a subset of them, a very small subset, a few dozen of, of the emails, and then said, like, you know, what do I do here? And the first thing I did was, was read into them, and it was very, very obvious that these were real emails and these were real documents. I mean, it was things like they were with, with PR firms. A lot, this was mainly centered around Burisma and uh, the, the Ukrainian gas company, you know, the slimy Ukrainian gas company on which Hunter served on their board. And they were clearly authentic. Now, that didn't necessarily mean that he was authentic or that they came the way he said it, because it was a weird story. I mean, a blind guy is getting it from Hunter who mm -hmm. comes in, fumbles around, then doesn't get it, give it, you know, it, it was a weird story, you know. But the documents were just, it was obvious that they, they were, there was something real there because they were, they were things that had phone numbers and, and CCs with multiple people in law firms and PR firms and all that. So I tried to help them. You know, I was a nobody at that point. Uh, you know, my, my, I get under a million people a month looking at my stuff. I was trying to help shop that out to some things. What I found during that time was, was that, uh, that the New York Post had it, and they were actually going to start working on something. I gave a few of them to uh, to to a couple of Fox News shows and helped get that out there. And then when the Post came out, I think we saw the worst case of of media malpractice. I, I think that I can cite in my lifetime. I mean, mm -hmm. if the media were lawyers, they should be disbarred after that. It was yep. all they did was attack him hardcore. We had a bunch of people from former. You know, former serious real guys and gals from the NSA and the FBI, I remember they signed that big letter, it has all the hallmarks of Russian disinformation, and that's all that the mainstream media needed to, to kind, of, kind of pretend that that doesn't exist. You still go look up this information on Wikipedia, and it's like, nope, with no evidence on this, and, and the Ukraine conspiracy, they did their best. I mean, look, the media had completely stop being referees by the time by the time Trump came up for re-election. They really stopped by the time he came for election. They started being players, not referees. And their only goal was to get get Joe Biden elected at that point. Yeah. And I think what you also saw was that that, that laptop was sitting on in, in somebody's desk and gathering dust for months and months and months. And the FBI was clearly going to sit on their thumbs and, yes. and let that let that slide. That's it was in their Delaware division too. It was in That's their Delaware division shocking. where he still had a lot of power there. So it the was the media it was we're used to, you know, as Bernie uh, Bernard uh, Goldberg would say, the, the slobbering love affair that the media has been having with the Democrats, Obama, and so on. But the FBI's partisan role in this was truly shocking to to me at the time. Um, I was shocked. I did not. I think a lot of people had faith in like the FBI and CIA that was unraveled over the course of the Trump years. And then this story in particular and the news today is that now uh, Senator Chuck Grassley, a Republican, he sent uh, this is according to Chuck Ross at the Washington Free Beacon posted this story last week um, that he sent the Justice Department and FBI a letter and says an analyst at the FBI named Brian Auten 
was named by whistleblowers as the person behind an August 2020 report that the FBI used to falsely suggest the Hunter Biden information was fake. It was disinformation. That, that bad information about him was disinformation. And um, this is the same guy who had failed to advise others at the FBI about inconsistencies in the Steele dossier. This guy, Brian Otten, pushed the Steele dossier, totally discredited it now. Um, he pushed aggressively for surveillance warrants against Carter Page, then Trump advisor. I mean, this guy's th this is the guy like when we talk about what the FBI did to right. Carter Page, to Trump to, on Hunter Biden. This is this is the one, according to the whistleblowers who did it. Uh, not fired yeah. yet, by the way. And, and, and then let me just finish that, the, the let me just finish on him. Mm -hmm. He um, in, in addition to him, there's another guy named uh, Timothy Tibalt, I think Tibalt. And he was an FBI assistant special agent in charge. What is it, Cal? T-Ball. OK. Uh, in charge of the Washington field office, who shut down a line of inquiry into Hunter Biden when the laptop came out October 2020. Um, he wanted the, the laptop to be labeled disinformation, despite he knew that some of the details were true. And if you look at his social media, it's all anti-Trump, anti-Bill Barr. And just today, before we got on the air, Ken, uh, news broke that this guy, T-Ball, has been removed from his leadership post, not fired, but removed, placed in another unspecified job. Brian Otten, apparently not, apparently still sitting there as they investigate these allegations. You know, I, I was one of those people who used to trust the FBI, too. And and maybe maybe our trust was overplaced 10 years ago, 20 years ago. I mean, let's be honest, in the, in the late 60s, when when everybody loved the FBI, they were doing their best to to discredit and and Martin Luther King and tapped his house and tapped his tapped his work and sent him letters encouraging him to kill himself. I mean, the FBI has always had some of that undertoning, but I kind of didn't see it in in the last decade. But when you see you combine this with with some of the emails and text with the those two agents who were having the affair and and we're going to stop That's him. And these the were worst. high level people. This wasn't low, low cells uh, on that. They clearly politicized it. You know, I hate to say people should go to jail, but man, People should go to jail. That, How that's about such fired? a misuse of things. Getting fired would be yeah, nice. At, at a minimum, yeah. Right? Um, so, yeah, that that will be ongoing. Look, they they did what they wanted to do. They they got Joe Biden in the White House. Mm -hmm. uh, the media has done its level best to ignore all allegations about Hunter Biden, whether it's corruption or his weird, you know, drug and gun habits, which appear to have broken more laws than I can count. Uh, and I think soon this will all go away with either just a slap on the wrist or a plea deal, something something small, something minor, which we all know would have looked very different had this guy been named Donald Trump Jr. Um, but it's part of the FBI's unraveling and the media's unraveling, right? Are the high fuel costs putting a damper on your summer vacation plans from higher prices at the pump to a spike in airfare? It's getting more expensive to get away for a week. But what if you could soak up those vacation vibes year round? Get a Michael Phelps swim spa by Master Spas and you can. Whether you want to stay close to home this summer or you just want to extend your break, a Michael Phelps swim spa by Master Spas can transform your backyard into a lovely oasis. It combines the benefits of a pool with the therapy of a hot tub. This will reinvent your family time. You'll love it. Your family and friends will too. You can basically do laps in a teeny tiny little pool that fits in a teeny tiny backyard and doesn't break the bank. Michael Phelps Swim Spas by Master Spas come in a variety of sizes. You can get the big ones and get the small ones that will complement virtually any yard, even if it's a small one. And since it is heated, you can use it year round in any climate. Michael Phelps Swim Spas are 100% made right here in the good old US of A by Master Spas, the world's largest swim spa manufacturer. Go to masterspas.com, put in the promo code MK. That will save you $1,000 on a Michael Phelps swim spa or $500 on a Master Spas hot tub. That's masterspas.com, promo code MK. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.